I really wanted the 15 because the 15 was aged in X bourbon casks. I can't get 15. I can't find it anywhere. I haven't been able to find it. I think the last bottle was sold out just after the festival because somebody tried it at the festival and it was so good that, that it sold out right away. And with some Highland water and a, and a stopper to drop her. Now I don't I don't generally do that. Mm. Tomatin, 15 years old, very nice. I'm gonna get a bottle of this. Absolutely. Well, I never did find a bottle. I never found a bottle of Tomatin 15, but I did find a three pack containing the 12, the 15, and the 18. I've already made videos about the 12 and the 18, but not the 15. And here it is. This is that bottle of Tomatin 15 that I promised myself that I would obtain someday. It is 50 milliliters, it is 43% alcohol by volume, and it cost me, well, let's split the whole thing in three, $40.25 divided by three, so like about 13 and a half dollars for this little baby here. Not exactly the value leader, that is uh, $13 for uh, one dram, basically. One quig-sized dram. What does it say on here? Let's see. Highland Single Malt. Naturally matured. Ah, oh, I hate that. Gold lettering on... Okay. Matured in traditional Scotch whiskey. Oak casks. Uh, over 15 years. I know for a fact... Uh, this is X bourbon all the way. I believe it says so on the box. Let's have a look here. www.tomatin.com distilled and bottled in Scotland. 15 years old. Let's see. Light and fresh with delicate oaky notes. Fruit, citrus, vanilla. Yeah, this is the one that's uh, bottled uh, matured for over 15 years in traditional it doesn't say uh, but it does, okay it says traditional casks but it says nothing see the 12 says finished in Spanish sherry casks matured in traditional scotch whiskey oak casks is the 15 and the 18 says finished in oloroso sherry casks Non-chill filtered. Okay, so this is probably chill filtered and maybe colored. I don't know one or the other. This will re this this has a special place on the wall. I'll show you where that goes. See right about here, in between the Founders Reserve, Forty Creek, and the Glenlivet Fifteen, on top of the McClellan's Isla. Yeah. That's exactly where it belongs, don't you know? Okay. Now, this is a momentous occasion. We're going to be cracking this one. Come on. Okay. We got that cracked open. Let's pour a quick sized dram, which is, of course, is 50 milliliters, which is the whole thing. Let's turn this sideways so that it can drain itself. Here we go. Tomatin 15. Three years and some odd since I vowed to get myself a whole bottle of it. But for some reason, the stuff became unavailable. And uh, the Tomatin Legacy uh, 
took its place shortly thereafter. And if you're in the United States of America, the Tomatin legacy is called Dualcas, um, D-U-A-L-C-H-A-S. I highly recommend it. I like I like that the legacy, which is bottled. Uh, it, it, it's aged in um, ex bourbon barrels and in some virgin oak. This one, however, this fifteen, if you can still get some, is aged, from what I understand, in uh, ex-bourbon barrels and that is quite evident on the nose even before I put it up to my nose I could tell oh, that is nice that's sweet slightly sour oh, this is lovely this is a Beautiful little dram. I wish I could have that whole bottle that I promised myself rather than just this 50% uh, 50 milliliters because 50 milliliters is just enough to give you a hint of what you'd be experiencing on the whole bottle. It's kind of a You know a whole 750 mils or even a 700 mil bottle You could open it and then you could Try it as it goes down and oxidizes, and over the months you could taste it and see how it changes and how it evolves and how much better it gets. But this, it can't really evolve this. I'm not going to be, you know, pouring half bottles and third of a bottle of the 50 mil. That is, that is just not, not right. But, yeah, at least I have the opportunity to, to taste it. It gives you a sampling, like... Um, it was Trenny or C of Trenny and C said that these, uh, you know, these little packages of uh, three bottles are uh, are good for giving you an idea, giving you a sampling of what there is. But I'm getting to the point where a sampling is not enough. I need a whole bottle in order to experience the whole thing. Of course, when I do these um, videos, I do the first bottle or the first opening. I open it first and I try it right away. If it if it really works for me, I'll just say that's that. If it's closed in and if it's if it needs to open up, I'll try it, yes, but then a few months later I'll come back, or maybe even a year later I'll come back and say, hey, this is what was missing at first. I did that not too long ago with a um, with a Brook Laddie and with uh, an unpeated Kalila 17 year old. I came back to it and, and gave my impressions of what I, what I think it's like. Mmm. Ex bourbon. There's a bit of a sharpness here. The sharpness, the sourness. Okay, it's coming out. I'm getting some sourness, some wood. Some caramel, but with the caramel and vanilla, yes, copious amounts of vanilla. But with the copious amounts of vanilla, there's also a sourness. I don't know where Tomatin got their casks or their barrels for this, but I suspect, correct me if I'm wrong, that some of these casks that were used, or barrels that were used, used the sour mash process. Just because it has a sour note on the nose and that sour note is quite prevalent getting a bit of spice too some white pepper oh. I've been 
looking forward to this one for three long years. Yeah. There's the vanilla again. And there's that slight sourness. There's that white pepper again. White pepper. Very pleasant. So it's somewhat spicy. And I'm getting a bit of... There are some fruity notes too. There's... Uh, apples and pears. Yes, definitely apples and pears. This is beautiful. This is exactly the experience that I was searching out before I was introduced to sherry, or should I say before I learned to enjoy sherry. And what switched me to sherry, I've said it many, many times, was the Glen Farkless 15. Maybe because I don't notice the sulfur in it. I did promise myself, however, that, though, that I would pour myself another dram of Glen Farkless 15 and try to get that sulfur note that all these people have been complaining about, and that they say that they hate it. Sea of Trini and Sea sulfur he said it's a it's a it's a sulfur monster or something to that extent so oh, sulfur city he said and vin pf from uh, no nonsense whiskey said uh, something along the same lines that the sulfur just kills him he can't take it maybe i don't even detect sulfur when i was a kid we had a biology class, and the biology class was pretty simple, and they were trying to explain to us genetics. And the way it worked is that, you know, you have ear, your, your ears, and if your earlobes are attached to the side of your face, that was one thing. But another thing was your earlobes, some people, their earlobes are not attached to the side of their face. I think mine is half and half, or it's not attached. I don't know, my beard's in the way, but, you know, there's some people who cannot roll their tongue like this. But I can. So I'm one of those people who can roll their tongue like this. Other people can, they just, they just stick it out like that and they can't roll it. Um, and then there are other people who can taste a certain chemical. Now I forget what that chemical was called. I mean, this was back in high school. This is like, you know, 40 years ago almost. And, uh, there are certain people who can taste this thing, and every kid in the class who could taste this stuff went, yeah, gross. But I didn't taste it, so I didn't go, oh, yeah, gross. You know, I just went, nah, there's nothing there. <laughs> so maybe I'm one of these people who goes, meh, there's nothing there, when they others go, ah, sulfur, oh, sulfur, I'm going to die. Well, maybe I'm just not one of those people. Because I never really picked up that much of a salt for note. If anything, it made it a little bit more spicy and tasty. But that's just me. Everyone's palate is different. Now, I have digressed again because I've had a few drams and I've been having a delightful morning. Just drinking whiskey and going through things and looking at comments and stuff. I should be watching videos now and catching up on everybody, but I'm just having too much of a good time just nosing this stuff. But I have gone on ad nauseum, haven't I? Even though, you know, um, I have been waiting for this opportunity for three years. All right. I'm going to cleanse the palate because it's got some jungle juice on it already. I have some uh, oat cakes, but they're in the other room. <laughs> okay. Water will have to do the job. All right. Here we go. 
Ah, you know, that sour note that I was getting it earlier on on the nose is morphing into a spicier note. Spicy and fruity. Now I'm getting a little bit of cinnamon. Yeah. Cinnamon with my apple and pears. And this is evolving very nicely. Okay, some more of that white pepper. I think it's time I taste it, don't you? Mm. Mmm. Oh. Yes. Yes. Definitely coats the mouth with a with a sourness. But along with that sourness is the apples and pears and white pepper all over the place white pepper and it's still coating the mouth mm. it's polishing the teeth almost what teeth I have left and uh, peppery it's a little bit alkaline you know it's kind of slippery but the mouthfeel is not very thick or chewy. I think I'll have to do this again, just to do it justice. There are certain whiskeys, namely, to me, the uh, Achentaschen. Achentaschen is one of those that people go, oh, Achentaschen 12, oh, Achentaschen 12. Myself, Achentaschen 12 is okay. And then they go, Achentaschen 3 wood, behold the God. They go, Achentaschen 3 wood, meh, feh. Achentaschen 3 wood, does not do it for me. But if you take the Akintoshan American Oak, I say that is right on point. That is in the Goldilocks zone. That is just like the old Akintoshan that they used to have, which was called the Classic. And it was not expensive and it was great. I can't find it anymore. It's gone. This reminds me so much of the Akintoshan American Oak. But meanwhile, it's a highland rather than a lowland. It's a little drier than a Dalwini 15, I think. Delicious. That white pepper and fruity apples and pears. And it's a little bit oaky on the aftertaste. Definitely stuff from the bourbon barrel. A little bit of caramel, a little bit of 
vanilla, but not overpoweringly so. If anything, the white pepper is stronger on the aftertaste than the vanilla or the um, caramel, which would suggest to me that the traditional American oak barrels that they used to mature this 15-year-old tomato was not first fill. That the casks were, you know, second and third fill maybe, but not first fill. Because with first fill, I would get a whole load more of caramel and um, vanilla rather than the copious amounts of white pepper that I'm getting. So I still love this. This is a beautiful dram. It's right it's right up my alley. It's just the kind of thing that I like. And I liked this kind of thing before I even learned to enjoy sherry. I taste sherry, I would go, almost spit it out because it was like wine. But this, this was right in, if I may borrow a term, right in my wheelhouse. Hmm. Beautiful whiskey. I would say that Tomatin should bring back the 15. Or if the 15 is still being produced by Tomatin, I think they should distribute it here. Because I would buy some. I know I'm being selfish. But how else can you be about whiskey? Because everyone has their own their own take and their own opinion and their own palate, their own way of enjoying it. There's no one set rule of how you should enjoy your whiskey. But I enjoy mine this way. And slancha. Food queen. <laughs> Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I get what you mean. I got my Glenn Farkless 15 here. If you can see that, but it's probably too much light on it. Maybe this way. Okay, got my Glenn Farkless 15. It's poured in here. I've been enjoying sipping on this while I've been making this video. And you know what? I get what you're saying about the sulfur. I smell it. But you know what? It does not annoy me. I actually enjoy it. I like it. That's what gives it character to me. Mm. To me, without the sulfur, this would be naked. But with the sulfur, mm, I enjoy it. But as you know, everyone's palate is different. I love Glenn Farkless 15 and bring on the sulfur. <laughs>